Welcome to the second knowledge clip on the subject of international law. This clip deals with the states. In this clip, we will look at the developments that led up to our modern nation state. We will look at the criteria for statehood. We will look at the theories of recognition, the change of states, and acquisition of territory. First, the birth of our modern nation state. We tend to say that the beginning of our modern state system was the Peace of Westphalia in 1648. At this time, the uh, states became sovereign nation states. And sovereign is a key word here. So sovereignty internally means that the state is the highest authority uh, within its territory uh, and within its jurisdiction. Externally, this meant that all states are equal and that equals cannot dominate over one another. This principle is still laid down in the uh, UN Charter. States did not stay the same over all these years. Um, over all time, the boundaries between states, the borders, changed um, and were different. And these developments continued throughout time. So what then makes a state? In this course, we use the criteria uh, of the Montevideo Convention, so the Montevideo criteria. And these criteria are to have a permanent population, a defined territory, a government with authority, and the capacity to enter into relations with other states. We will now look at these criteria more closely. The first is to have a permanent population. There's no requirements in numbers. So there's no minimum amount of uh, people to be part of the population. And the population can even be nomadic, um, as is the tribe that you see here. What you do need is a population that can be distinguished from others within the territory. And they can be distinguished based on their culture, on their habits, uh, on their identity. If you can have uh, a certain culture or identity, then you know that it is a population, part of the state. Then we move on to the territory. So the state must have a certain defined territory. Here on these pictures you see the state of Zealand, which was proclaimed in the 1970s. Um, it's established on a uh, platform in the ocean just before the coast of uh, Great Britain. This country um, exists, has its own flag. You can also buy on the internet a noble title. Um, if you have desire to become a count or a countess, uh, you can buy this noble title for the country of Zealand. But is it actually a state? Well, there's no um, criterion that says that the boundaries must be fixed. Uh, and still in international law, many disputes between states relate to boundaries. The territory of a state can consist of uh, land, of sea, and the airspace above the land and the sea. Um, but you must have a certain core that is reasonably ascertainable. So you must be able to point to a certain part of the map and say, well, that is part of the territory of that certain state. It does not matter how big the state is. So the size is irrelevant. However, the state must be fixed on a natural segment of the Earth's territory. And that means that a platform, although its pillars are connected to the Earth's uh, territory, a platform does not um, meet the criteria for statehood. The government um, must sort of represent the people within a state. So the people must be self-governing. However, that does not mean that there is a certain requirement to have a certain mode of government. So there's no requirement that the government should be a um, democracy, for example. However, the government must have uh, effective, legitimate, independent, um, and exercise total control over the population and its territory. And finally, the state um, is determined by its capacity to enter into relations with other states. And this is really showing the independence uh, of states and equality of states. And it, um, it shows the difference between international organizations and individuals, the other um, subjects of international law. 
Examples of this capacity would be to have uh, commercial uh, business or transactions, but also very public tasks like entering into a treaty, um, exchanging diplomats, um, going to court to represent the state, etc. Next, we come to the theories of recognition. So why are these theories important? Well, we just saw that there are four criteria for statehood. And the first theory says that if you meet these four uh, criteria, then you are a state, regardless whether um, what other states are thinking. So it is not necessary to be actually recognized by other states as being a state to be a state. The other theory is saying the exact opposite. So the other theory is saying it's nice that you meet those criteria, but you still need to be recognized by other states to be a, to be a state. And this recognition is usually a very political act. Um, and that's why they call this theory, which is the dominant theory, um, a very subjective theory. So you only exist as a state when others recognize you as such. And these pictures show um, the political nature of recognition. Um, these pictures are maps from 2016, and they show um, how many states recognized Kosovo as a state, and how many rec states recognized Palestine as a state. And what you see is that very often uh, a state either recognizes one of two, and that has to do with international politics. States can also change their nature. And changes can be, um, for example, through secession. Uh, in secession, a certain part of the territory of a state becomes a new state. And that happened, for example, with South Sudan and Sudan, but also, for example, with Kosovo. It is also um, through decolonization that many states came into being. And this process is more or less ended by now, but for a long time it created many, many new states. So the former colonizing powers uh, had many territories overseas who became independent states. And for example, the Democratic Republic of Congo was part of Belgium. States can also merge or unite. Um, and that happened, for example, in the case of Tanzania. Or states can dissolve. And that happened in the famous example of the Soviet Union, which fell apart into quite a number of new states. Then finally, um, the acquisition of territory. So how do states get their territory? Well, this can be done um, in the very old-fashioned way of occupation. And occupation was the idea that a state could just um, go to another territory, and if it belonged to no one, it can just claim it at is there. The fact that usually there was already a population living there was sort of ignored. Then there's prescription. And under prescription, a state also possess a certain country, a certain part of uh, another state's country, but there it's actually acknowledged that it was another state's territory. Um, and the state should peacefully possess that uh, territory for a very long time and actually also have authority over that territory. Then there's the um, cession of territory. So that means that one state transfers the territory to another state. And this happens with uh, the Dutch transfer of New Amsterdam in the hands of the British, uh, which called it New York. And finally, there is annexation of uh, land. And that happened, for example, it's a unilateral act where one state um, takes over uh, the control over another territory. And that happened with uh, Crimea by Russia.